Thanks a lot, Bruce, and thanks to Water Furnace for inviting me here today. I'll keep this brief. Um, it's great to see the leadership that you guys are showing at the local level here with your business in Fort Wayne. And you guys are also really lucky in the 3rd Congressional District in Indiana to have a congressman like Mark Sauter at the federal level in D.C. fighting for your interests. Um, this bill that you, that you referenced wasn't passed easily. It wasn't passed the first time in the House. Um, it, it, I think it, both sides can, can agree it was improved by what the Senate action uh, changed it and, and added some tax incentives. And I think this bill, uh, and especially with respect to the environmental part, portion of it, is a good way to kind of look at what the federal government can do to incentivize and leverage private sector um, funds and private sector innovation and not hammer down on businesses with uh, arbitrary limiting their supply or taxing them. I and mean, we saw that in the last session of Congress, um, multiple uh, tax revenue raisers that were proposed the Congressman Souter led the, the, def, the defense on uh, that the attempted to, co to tax energy providers and, and, and those that are exploring for American energy. Uh, and that's not the direction that we need to take, especially as we, we, we've seen the energy crisis last summer. I don't think you've seen the last uh, of the, the $4 gallon gas. Um, and and when, the, when the economic downturn recovers, I think you're going to see that again. I'm uh, manager of the Great Lakes region, so I, besides Indiana, cover uh, Pennsylvania and, and Ohio and Michigan and and some other Great Lakes states, and you're not seeing the same kind of leadership at, in some cases that you're seeing right here in Indiana. And, and it's a success story. Um, uh, the U.S. Chamber's endorsed uh, Congressman Souter, and, and, and rightly so. 87% um, lifetime record uh, really goes to bat for businesses. Um, and uh, I'm just so proud to be able to present uh, Congressman Souter with our award, our Spirit of Enterprise Award, for the first session of the 110th Congress to Congressman Mark Souter. Uh, first, thank you for that, because uh, anybody who's watching any TV right now, uh, it wouldn't surprise you that the Chamber's uh, uh, supporting me or that I have a good rating, because you'd think that uh, from the ads that all I do is vote for business, it says business execs, uh, companies, and don't side with the average person uh, in my district. But I have a simple philosophy. If you're not employed, uh, everything else kind of falls apart because if you aren't employed, you can't make your house payment, you can't make your health care payments and so on. So I want to know what the, the companies in my district need to advocate for them because they're the people who employ the people in my district. And if you're going to have jobs in the district, you better be making sure of who your employers are and, and uh, what they need regardless, whether it's orthopedics or RVs or tire companies or the GM pickup plant. Uh, I view that, for example, on the credits that, that we were, uh, the cash flow to GM and Ford, maybe nationally they can uh, argue over th what the policy is, but I represent the biggest pickup plant in the United States, and so I'm going to fight for that pickup plant. And the other 434 guys can argue out about the general policy. My job is to argue for the people in my area. Now, there are times when you have to look uh, nationally, but if on annuities, we're the center with Lincoln of annuities industry. If the local congressman doesn't defend annuities, if the local congressman doesn't defend the pickup plant, who else is going to defend it? So that's part of the role, and that's kind of where it's been with Water Furnace. From the time I first came out here, I got excited about it. Look, I'm a, I'm a drill everywhere guy. I'm a clean coal guy. I'm a nuclear guy. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing every angle that we can in every form of energy fr uh, from that. And it's just been doggedness through those tough years when, when Jim founded the company and, and Tim and Bruce came in because there have been times where where literally wondered whether Water Furnace was going to survive, not whether it was going to be one of the hottest companies in America. Uh, and that uh, uh, to watch this process to finally get it recognized with solar and wind. Uh, as we look at the fundamentals of how we're going to provide power, this is the number one manufacturing district in the United States. What precisely does that mean? It means that we have to have energy. The SDI plant over here takes as much energy as the entire city of Fort Wayne. The uh, GM plant takes as much as a city of 40,000. You are not going to power GM or SDI with solar or geothermal or a bunch of windmills. This, what you see trying to do a house with solar gives you an idea that now take 250,000 of those homes and all the retail and imagine what you'd have to have for solar to power just one steel plant, and we have five Nucor and two SDIs, that if you're going to have industry, you're going to have a challenge in energy. So anything that we can get off the grid, in other words, if we can get it through geothermal, if we can get it through wind, if we can get it through uh, solar at different homes, anything that comes off that grid 
reduces our demand in the major uh, uh, for I&M and, and, and NIPSCO. Uh, if we can take some of the pressure off those power plants as we convert more uh, of the uh, non-manufacturing uh, type of, of businesses that, are, that uh, can easily convert and don't take huge sums of energy, and we convert more residential, we convert more service areas to uh, geothermal, it takes the pressure off the grid. Uh, that uh, Sandia Labs, they had a number of us, I'm part of the U.S.-Canada Legislative Exchange, partly because I'm a Republican leader on border. So because of border, I work with Canada and Mexico uh, a lot, trying to make sure our borders are secure. But this year we went to Sandia Labs, which is our other big alternative energy. And what you saw there on solar, that they said that if you cover 40 percent of the Mojave Desert with these huge monsters that go up in the air, it's the most advanced solar work there is, you'd have to cover 40 percent of the Mojave Desert and then you could maybe cover Phoenix, Las Vegas, and part of Los Angeles. And there's no way to get it on the grid because we don't have power lines to get to the Midwest and solar power dissipates as it goes to the grid. Solar power is, is, is a low-grade option uh, as kind of an alternative for uh, some homes. Uh, man who leases my building in Grable is hooked up with the German company. They have a new breakthrough. It was featured in the Fort Wayne Journal Gazette a couple Sundays ago, Tom Blake. He actually uh, leases all our buildings, the Antique Center out in Grable. Uh, I think that you'll see an expansion in solar, but it is only a part of the mix here. In Indiana, this offers our best breakthrough opportunity. To have a cutting-edge company here uh, in the green economy is just, I mean, I hope that they're wrong. I hope we get more credits than are in the bill and that it expands. And I just, I think the vision of the leadership here uh, the investment that kept it going in the leaner years, and now all of a sudden we have the big breakthrough. By the way, one other thing with the rescue package, if the credit market falls apart, it won't do any good to have the, have the tax credit for people to put into the geothermal systems if they can't get the, the funding to put it in their home. In other words, if you can't get your, your loan or uh, to redo your system, it won't do any good. So we had to have both parts of that bill in order to make your, your credit work. But this is exciting. I, I appreciate uh, your leadership here at Water Furnace. I appreciate the Chamber's support uh, that uh, there is uh, never a bill where I don't want to, to know, uh, first and foremost, what are the companies in my district saying? And secondly, I want to know how uh, the Chamber, the NFIB, and others feel it's going to affect jobs, because that's the core of what we do in this district. So thanks for your leadership. Thanks for having me here today.